thought I would share some of my Easter preparations with you in case there's anything going on here that might inspire you when you entertain for whatever holiday or reason you may have in your life. But I did want to share this great book, Baking Yesteryear. I don't know if you've heard of this book or if you have this book. It is so much fun. I really enjoy it. And as you can see, I have a lot of little bookmarks in it. But one of my favorite recipes in this book, and I, you know, I haven't tried them all, but I've made this particular recipe again and again and again. It's the Continental Johnny Cake. And it's, you can see my little note, amazing. Um, it's so good. It's basically cornbread that you make in a cast iron skillet and it is transformative in terms of any kind of cornbread you ever had. You'll be like, nope, I'm only making this from now on. So anyway, if you have a chance to pick up this book, I highly recommend it. It's so awesome. And I'll show you how the cornbread comes out because it's, uh, yeah, and I wish I could share the smell of it with you because that, of course, is the best part. I'm setting the table for our Easter dinner. And I did decide to use the plates that I recently thrifted. I just love the colors and I think they're very springy. I changed the tablecloth to a white one because I thought it would go better with the dishes. So Eric and I are just getting the table exactly where we want it. And I'm putting out some of the napkins. I had planned to use cloth napkins, but I just didn't have a chance to purchase them. So my new napkin rings will have to wait for another event. And I love having an opportunity to use my mother's silver. So I'm setting that out, it's like seeing old friends. You can see the little chest I keep it in to the left. I actually found that one day by the side of the road. It works great. And now I'm putting out our goblets. I had thrifted these in December for the purposes of entertaining. So this is the first time I've used them. And here is a place setting a little closer up so you can see how nice it looks. Thrifted plates with the silver and the goblets. I think it all came out really well. Unfortunately, you can see the lines under the tablecloth from where the um, tablecloth pad is. I should really get a new one. And I put out these crystal candlestick holders that are really old. Um, they were my mother's and she actually had thrifted them a long time ago. So nice to see those here. And I thought I would show you the shelves in the dining room because I've got a few nods to Easter there, the Ukrainian style decorated eggs and some postcards and some little figurines. And these are the crafted eggs that I recently acquired and a little tulip and this cute little bunny set that my mom had had along with this little egg figure. Yeah, it's just kind of cheerful. A lot of smalls, but they make me happy. I thought the table was looking a little bare, so I just added this table runner to give it a little bit of depth and I'm happy with how that looks. I bought this little runner last year in Charleston and it actually has tassels that come with it, but that's too tempting for the cats. So I removed them for now. And speaking of the cats, they're pretty mad because they're shut up in the sunroom while we have company over. And there they are. They really want to get out of here and check out all the commotion. You see Iris is way back there and Indy is looking very indignant. Yeah, he's mad. Here he comes. He's gonna yell at me. I know. I'm sorry. No kitties allowed. I'm deep into Easter preparations at this point. Everybody's coming over at one, and right now it is 10.30, um, but I wanted to share something fun. I am making my mother's iced tea recipe. This was something that we were obsessed with when we were kids. And I always make it in her old red Tupperware 
container because that's how she did it. And basically what happens is you boil nine tea bags and I let the water sit until it's cool. I add it to the container, do it over the counter so I don't make a mess. I add a container of frozen lemonade. Half a cup of sugar. And then I will fill it to the top with water, right to this water line. And then I'll give it a good mix. I'll let it sit. And when company comes over, I will do my best not to drink all of it. It's not good for you, but it is delicious. I was so excited to use this vintage Tupperware Jello mold for Easter. You can see how it's looking right now. And I've had Jello salad a lot in my childhood, but I've never made it as a grown up. So I'm struggling to get it out of the mold, as you can see here. And I'm glad you can't hear. Um, my my crazy language as I try to make this work without having everything fall apart until I figured out that I needed to take out the middle section. <gasps> Voila! It worked and now I'm cheering and I'm so happy with how it came out. It looks just like I remember it from when I was a kid. <laughs> Here's another shot. Yep, that is some good looking jello success. And it was so much fun to do. This was like the highlight of my Easter preparations. And here is the cornbread I was telling you about. And it smells amazing. Also wanted to show you this 1950s divided snack tray that I'm using. This is actually on my eBay store. I popped it in a silver tray. But doesn't it look so pretty? and I just put some crackers to the side. And now I'm gonna enjoy my glass of iced tea uh, right before company comes. I'm including this footage so you can see that later on in the day, Indy got his attention, and you can see he's no worse for the wear for having been in the sunroom. I feel like Easter came and went in a blink of an eye. I think part of it was because it was so early this year, but I was really happy with how my meal turned out. I made ham, which I actually am not a big fan of, but it seemed like the Eastery thing to have. I made ham and scalped potatoes that were amazing. I made green bean casserole, you know, with the little crunchy onions on top, very old school. Of course, my jello fruit salad, which you saw, which was definitely the highlight of the meal. Everyone had very like a strong nostalgic reaction to it. Um, my niece brought a salad. I made the cornbread that I briefly showed you. And I think that was it. It was very good. And then my sister-in-law made a pineapple upside down cake and brought coconut cupcakes. So by the end of the meal, we were kind of rolling on the floor full. <laughs> so today will be a day of lighter eating, I think. And actually, I am going to run to the store in a little bit and pick up some split peas because I think I'm going to make a split pea soup with the ham bone. It's something that my grandmother did every year. And although I don't really care for peas, strangely, I like pea soup. And although I don't really eat ham, Strangely, I like my pea soup with a ham bone in as it simmers. So I am just full of contradictions. Anyway, it's really time to take down the Easter decor. I just feel like I put it up five seconds ago, but I'm gonna put it down, make sure I store it carefully so it's where it needs to be when I pull it out again next year, which I think will be April, not March. And um, yeah, put the house back to the way it usually goes. I'm also going to have to do, I think, a little bit of a closet clean out because I have this weird closet space in my dining room. I think it was just kind of popped in there by a previous owner because it was under the stairs and it was just usable space, which is always a good idea. 
but I have the tendency to put the weirdest stuff in there. And then when I actually need to get my hands on things, I go in that closet and I'm like, what am I doing in here? So I'll show you my embarrassing closet and see if I can't get that more functional. And yeah, put my house back together. So here we go. this bunny as just a sign of spring because I don't think it screams Easter. It definitely says spring to me and I think the white matches nicely with the Port Marion. So I think this guy's gonna stay for a little longer. There we go. I know we have a bad glare on the mirror, sorry about that, but the mantle is nice and clear and just the way it needs to be. Also, I'll show you this. I'm gonna turn this camera so we lose the glare. This actually goes on our house, but um, Eric was making some um, improvements to our front door. Well, not improvements, he was restoring the front door. So he took it off so he could finish doing that. And he didn't put it back because the house badly needs to be painted. So anyway, this is uh, our, our National Historic Registry plaque showing that our house is an historic place. And it's so funny, I'm such a geek. When I was in my early 20s and first starting to get really deeply into antiques, I would read a lot of antiques magazines. They, they don't make as many as they used to back then. But anyway, I used to read them and dream that one day I would live in a historic place. And I do. And actually, I've lived in several now. <laughs> I've lived in several now, although this is the only house I've had that's registered. And it's really cool when your house is registered because you get the plaque. But what is kind of a downside about it, and doubly for us, because not only are we in a registered home, we're in a registered historic neighborhood. So it's beautiful, and I love it because I love history and old houses. The downside is if you want to make any changes, you really hit a wall hard. Our historic um, society is very strict. So like we had to fix our front fence because it was, it was like honestly just crumbling apart. Um, and we got a lot of um, unpleasant little letters and notices and things telling us we had to come in front of the Historic Society and defend what we were doing and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, we sidestepped it because I was able to show old pictures of the house and we were able to show that we were using the same materials. And in fact, we, we saved whatever we could from the fence um, and we made it look exactly the same. And so I was able to prove that it was fine. Was it annoying? Yes. But, you know, I guess on the other hand, if they're not strict that way, people could do all kinds of things and then this neighborhood would lose all of its charm. So I get it. I wanted to put up um, an arbor in the front yard, well, sort of to the side of the house um, so wisteria could grow over it. But you know what, I decided not to because if I did that um, in, in with using kind of a wooden structure with a gate, like I wanted to, again, it would have been a whole historic society thing. So instead I just popped up one of those like metal ones. It looks just as good. It saves me a little of the, you know, um, red tape that I didn't want to go through. But these are some of the things you have to think about when you live in a historic home, a historic neighborhood, pros and cons, but mostly pros. Here's my hutch put back together. And I'll probably leave it like this for some time now. Just kept the bunny. I don't think the bunny is too Eastery for this. Do you think for maybe like just April and May? What do you think? Do you think keep the bunny, lose the bunny? Again, the <clears throat> it would only be probably for April and May, probably take the bunny down by June because bunnies don't really give me a summertime vibe. No offense to bunnies. Thoughts, comments? I am all ears. Okay, here we go. 
Everything is packed up until next year. There's actually St. Patrick's Day stuff and Easter stuff in here. So it is ready for the attic. Oh, shoot, I forgot all of these. Oh boy. Okay, I just took everything out and rearranged it so it would fit better because I didn't like how close the top of the bin was to fragile eggs. So this is fine and I think everything will be safe. And now this can be popped back into the attic. Ugh, but first I better give it a good clean because that's pretty nasty. Yeah, I'll clean that and then it will go in the attic. Okay, here is the closet of shame. And you can see this little chest is a little bit too close to it, but I use that chest for a lot of storage. So I'm gonna move it back. So I can show you this closet. And unfortunately, during our stairs renovation, we had a fair bit of damage to the space. This is so typical of home ownership, isn't it? You start to make some progress somewhere and then something else falls apart. But that's okay, it's easily fixed and nobody sees this space anyway. So I need to make some decisions about what I need to have quick access to that should be in this tiny little closet and what is maybe better off stored upstairs. So I'm gonna clean it out and see if we can't make some improvements here. embarrassing in a few different ways. Let me show you. First of all, look at all of the debris that fell out from the back of the stairs and the damage is worse than I realized. So, and this is totally, wow. Yeah, this is totally bent. So I think this top piece may need to be entirely replaced and I need to clean out all of this gross debris. Ugh, there's so much of it. So anyway, that's the first thing I need to do. And you see there's even a lot of room down here and debris fell down there as well. So yuck. But this is arguably worse. <laughs> this is all of the stuff that was in that closet. I was calling it a little closet, but this so-called little closet had a lot of stuff in it. Oh my gosh. I can't even believe how much stuff I had in there. So I need to do a mega purge and a mega clean. You know, these projects always seem like they're gonna be so easy. And then I get started and it's a big yikes. Okay, this is cleaned out. And what I found is if I touch this top part, uh, more stuff comes, more debris falls. So when my husband removes this, it's gonna be a big mess. So it's just as well that I'm clearing this up a little bit because I'm gonna have to clean it out again whenever he's ready to take on that project. So now the question becomes, what do I do with all of this stuff? And believe it or not, before I had the cats, I used to have flowers absolutely all over the house. So I was constantly using vases and now I'm not using them so much because the cats are just not in a good phase to be able to be around stuff like that. So um, they actually were used, but I can definitely see there's some stuff here that's not special and not worth saving that I can definitely donate. So I think I'm gonna start by doing a pile of things. I'll do, I think, three piles. <laughs> a pile of stuff that's going back into the closet, a pile of stuff that I can donate, a pile of stuff that I wanna hold on to but doesn't need to be in the closet so it can live elsewhere, 
And then, oh, also maybe, I don't know if there's anything here that I would be willing to sell. I see at least one thing that I would definitely sell. So we'll do some cleaning, some purging. Yeah, I'm gonna get cracking on that and I'm gonna show you what I decide. Well, I think this is much better. So let me explain what I did here. I know all this stuff is gonna have to move and this is not super stable. So I just put basically planting things here. So all of my flower frogs, um, my floral arrangement foams and things, some um, plate stands in this little planter. I have little like uh, glass rocks that I use for planting. There's some candle snufters. Nothing serious and nothing that I can't easily move. Down here, I have some napkins. I have these fabulous vases that I love. They're Roseville, but um, they have to be away right now because of the cats and this beautiful hand-blown bowl I bought in Murano. And these candlesticks with the hurricane shades were my grandmother's. I moved my pretty Limoges terrine in here. This is a much better place for it. And then down here, I have lots of crystal vases and some candlesticks. I have my um, pretty compote for when I make desserts. And in the back, I have the margarita glasses and the red wine glasses. Here I have my grandmother's uh, silver plated roasting pan, which I also just cleaned a little bit and some candles. This is the box that contains all of my silver and next to it is a bud vase. Down here I put taller vases and some other things that I do use but not that often. And again, right now we're living differently because of the cats. I would normally have tons of plants and flowers and all kinds of things, but we'll get back there someday. And if I had to choose between plants, flowers, and cats, I would choose the cats all day long. I thought I would show you that I did make that pea soup that I was talking about earlier, it's simmering. This recipe needs to simmer for a good two and a half hours. And I think we can probably agree that pea soup isn't the most beautiful of soups, but I think it will be delicious. We'll find out. Here is a grouping of my most recently listed items on my eBay store. I thought I would share them with you. I have lots and lots of listing to do. There are just never enough hours in the day, don't you find? But anyway, this group is on my eBay store. And as I've said before, if you're interested in the things I pick up, you might wanna just check the store from time to time and see what's there. Oh, and by the way, if you wanna try to make a jello salad of your own, I am selling a jello mold right now, and it even has the instructions inside. So if you feel like giving that a shot, I've got a mold for you. And the dogs are barking in the background. I have just one more update to share with you. Here's an update on the crazy quilt. It is no longer soaking. Despite all of the shout color strips I put in there, I did have some running in the dye. You can see it in a few different places. This is a rip that got a little bit worse. I mean, it definitely isn't the happiest camper I ever saw. Some of the blue has some color running. Definitely it's not in perfect shape, but you know what? The mold and mildew are off it. It doesn't smell crazy anymore. And maybe when it dries, it won't look too bad. I don't know. If I didn't wash it, it was going to have to be thrown away. And so we'll see. It was definitely worth the effort to try to keep it together. And I think it might be all right. So that's what I have for you today. It's been a little bit of everything as usual, but I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please take a moment and hit like and subscribe. And I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.